Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jim Schultz, council member and mayor pro tem for the city of Independence, Missouri, and I'm serving my second year as the chair of Mid-America Regional Council's Board of Directors. On behalf of the Mark Board of Directors and all of our members, welcome to the 16th Annual Regional Assembly and celebration of Mark's 40th anniversary. Wow, 40 years. It's a long time, as anyone who's been married can attest, which makes me think that serving this region is a council of governments is not at all different from a marriage. Over the years, we've had our differences, but we've been always been able to make it and come back together for the common good. We recognize that we're stronger when we work together and not against each other. We get more done and the residents of our regional family are happier. But Mark has done more than help us maintain good relationships, important as that is. Mark has a long record of accomplishments which you will hear a little bit about today. I also would like to take home, I'd also like to invite you to take home one of our annual reviews which one of the servers outside the ushers will be giving to you as you leave. You'll be amazed, as I am, at the breadth and depth of issues and the problems Mark has addressed, working with multiple partners across all of jurisdictional lines. The scope of our work grows every year and directly reflects the trust, the commitment, and the support that all of us give to Mark. The level of co cooperation we have in this region is recognized and admired around the country. And you are the ones that make that happen. Your work is what makes Mark a success and what makes our region a better place for all of us to call home. Please join me in applauding the great work taking place across the region and in congratulating Mark in the 40 years of outstanding contributions to each of our communities and to this region. We have some very special guests with us here today and I'd like us to recognize them. Today we have 12 of our past board chairs and two past executive directors. I'd like each of them to, act, to stand as I read their names. Tom Cooley, Chuck Eddy, Georgia Erickson, John Lingle, Jack O'Rennick, Barbara Potts, Ron Schaefer, Doug Smith, Ali Spear, Ted Stolfus, and Annabeth Serball. We also have past executive directors, Dick Davis and Pete Levy. Please join me in applauding their contributions to Mark over the years. Shortly, we will hear from Mark's executive director, David Warm, with an overview of our current activities. We will also honor some of the strongest leaders in the region with a presentation of the 2012 Mark Regional Leadership Awards. And Mayor, Mayor Mick Cornett of Oklahoma City will share insights into how his home, his hometown has weathered the fi recent financial crisis under his leadership. Investing in a massive public infrastructure program including modern streetcar system. Now I want to recognize the organizations that have sponsored tables for this event. The names of these local governments, businesses, not-for-profit agencies are displayed on the large screens on either end of the room. Please join me in thanking them for helping make today's assembly a success. And before we begin, I want to take a moment to recognize my colleagues who serve on our board of directors. Our board members give countless hours representing shared regional interests at local, state, and national levels and are truly dedicated to both their individual commitments and this region. 
I'd like for all of the MARC board members to please stand and receive our sincere thanks to your service for our community. And now I'd like to introduce Mark's Executive Director, David Warm, who will tell you about Mark's current work and the accomplishments of the past year. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, thank you for being here today and for all you do for our Kansas City region. Uh, most of us, though not all of us, can remember 1972. It was an eventful and memorable year. Uh, Richard Nixon became the first U.S. president to visit both China and Russia and was later re-elected. Mark Spitz won seven gold medals in the Olympics in Munich, which were also memorable because of the tragic massacre of Israeli athletes. All in the family owned the airwaves, the Godfather owned the box office, and American Pie owned the radio dial. And what you remember the best, the Mid-America Regional Council was formed. Eilis Davis and Charles Wheeler as mayors of Kansas City were pivotal in uh, brokering the merger of two predecessor agencies and Overland Park City Council member Jan Myers who later represented the region in Congress became the first chair of the Mark Board. Since that time the world and this region have changed profoundly as, and so has Mark. But what has remained constant is our mission to advance regional progress through leadership, planning, and action. What remains constant is the imperative that we function well as a region, that we address in meaningful ways the opportunities and challenges common to our communities and citizens. And what remains constant is that the work you do through Mark is and has always been just that, the work you do. You and your predecessors bring the ambition, the skills, the spirit of cooperation that fuels everything we do at Mark and propels the progress of this region. The night, I, what I want to do today is to, to look back over about 40 years to highlight your work through MARC, how it shaped this agency, and how it continues today to advance the economic, social, and environmental health of our metropolitan community. The 1970s. For MARC, this was a decade focused on building regional planning capacity. With an agenda largely inherited from its predecessor agencies, MARC was highly focused on implementing federally driven planning programs. During this era, Mark established its high standards for professionalism, a tone of neutrality, and the facility to effectively align the goals of federal, state, and local governments, fundamental qualities that have endured. From the outset, Mark was designated as the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Transportation, and since then, the region's transportation planning and decision making have become increasingly strategic. Today, the region's long-range transportation plan emphasizes accessibility, economic, environmental, and placemaking principles that will guide the completion of over $100 million in projects in the next few years alone. How we think about transportation has shifted dramatically over the years. Today, the fo region is intently focused on results, as documented in the first annual performance measurement report published this year. Traffic fatalities are down significantly, we have fewer deficient bridges, and congestion levels remain much lower than our peers. Today, we also think about transportation more comprehensively. Regional technical and training resources have helped at least nine cities and counties adopt complete street policies to ensure that roadways serve all modes of travel. And we are pursuing freight and logistics strategies to help us move goods as well as people. And we are increasingly focused on efficient travel, including involving employers and citizens in the fourth annual Green Commute Challenge, Greater Kansas City Bike Week, and International Walk to School Day. A partnership with the Metropolitan Energy Center, Clean Cities Coalition created a plug-in readiness plan for electric vehicles, and the rideshare program increased registrations by 10%. And the region continues to upgrade the Operation Greenlight Traffic Signal co co uh, Coordination System. A recent study shows that just three of the dozens of corridors in the systems saves motorists nearly $2 million each year in time and fuel, as well as reducing vehicle emissions. In 1972, Mark received its first grant to study regional mass transit. While our region's progress on this front has been less than ideal, in fact, today, 
fewer people have access to transit than in 1972, much has gone right. The Smart Moves Transit vision has guided important enhancements such as bus rapid transit corridors and the Johnson County I-35 bus on shoulder. And a regional partnership attracted $50 million in federal Tiger funds for significant improvements along major urban corridors on both sides of the state line. Through a partnership of Kansas City, Missouri, Jackson County, and KCATA, Mark was awarded a grant to analyze commuter rail services in the I-70 and Rock Island corridors in Jackson County, as well as a downtown streetcar in Kansas City. Backed by a strong network of local leaders, this region is finally moving to create the transit system we both need and deserve. The region's transit progress engages countless stakeholders, including energetic regional advocates like Kitty McCoy, who we honor today. In fact, beginning in the 1970s, Mark has continually emphasized in innovative ways to effectively involve citizens in its work. Beginning with the Citizen Advisory Committee, which was a novel concept at the time, Mark uses now a, fire, a full range of dynamic techniques to engage tens of thousands of citizens in regional decisions and services. One example is Imagine KC, an innovative partnership with KCP T Public Television that is bringing positive ideas for shaping the future of our region out of meeting rooms and into living rooms through a series of TV broadcasts and internet resources. During the 1970s, Mark was also designated as the Area Agency on Aging to provide comprehensive support services for the elderly, especially those who are frail or low income. In recent years, the Commission has built upon its 40 years of basic services, nutrition, transportation, and in-home health care, adding more community-oriented services, such as ombudsman and long-term care facilities, mental health and self-advocacy programs, resources for family caregivers, elder abuse prevention initiatives, and support for older adults who raise their grandchildren. Earlier this year, Mark received philanthropic funding to advance Casey for Aging in Community, a broad partnership to expand systems of support, ranging from housing to mobility to civic engagement for the region's rapidly increasing number of older adults. As the 1970s became the 1980s, Mark focused on building the cooperative capacity of the region, Enabled by an emerging network of interlocal relationships established in its formative years, Mark began to move beyond federal programs and respond to local priorities. For instance, Mark formed and supported two municipal self-insurance trusts, organized professional roundtables, and helped to assemble funding for important investments such as the Heart of America Bridge. Events of regional significance, such as the Hyatt disaster and a deadly heat wave, created a context in which local leaders turned to one another for cooperative solutions. <clears throat> in fact, during the 1980s, Mark's role in emergency services significantly expanded. The regional 911 system was established, and over the years it has evolved into, this, into a state-of-the-art regional mutual aid radio system known as Rambus that forms the backbone of our emergency response system and enables public safety agencies to communicate seamlessly. The 911 system now handles over 4 million calls, 70% through cell phones, and as technology continues to advance, the region is continually upgrading the network to improve reliability and transition to next generation 911 so that we're ready for texting and video. One of the region's longest standing initiatives is the Mid-America Regional Council Emergency Rescue, known as MARKER, which was created in the 70s with federal support as one of the nation's first paramedic networks. Marker came into its own with local support in the 1980s, and today it continues to convene emergency medical agencies and hospitals to establish standards and systems for uniformly excellent pre-hospital care. Over the last year, the region's emergency response network, which in the 1980s was supported by less than one half of a staff person, conducted more than 100 training activities, including a multi-day exercise involving over 1,500 people. The region works together to teach residents how to prepare for emergencies. In March, the Metropolitan Emergency Managers Committee produced an educational and entertaining set of videos about emergency preparedness, which recently won a prestigious national award. And the Mid-America Regional Council Local Emergency Planning Committee recently expanded to include Johnson, Leavenworth, and Wyandotte counties, creating a more efficient 
and truly regional system for managing hazardous materials. But the true evidence of our regional readiness was the devastating tornado in Joplin. Hundreds of trained and well-equipped emergency personnel from this region responded to the call. Our region's ability to make this kind of difference can be credited to dedicated professionals like Michael Henderson, one of the regional leaders we honor today. As the 1980s turned into the 1990s, Mark's agenda focused even more intently on enabling the region to act and invest strategically, ushering a decade of building leadership capacity, responding to broader understanding of our interdependency, and to increase confidence and expectations among leaders to work collaboratively, Mark grew in both size and complexity. Seeds were planted in the 1990s for region-shaping outcomes. A report on the urban core called for a region-wide framework for sustainable metropolitan growth that is now largely reflected in local and regional plans. The Metro Green system was envisioned and led to the 300-mile system of trails we enjoy and expand today and cultural planning and policy work contributed to the formation of the Metropolitan Cultural District and the restoration of Union Station. During this period, Mark was asked to lead an emerging strategy to improve access to quality early education. Today, with the support of philanthropies, regional early learning programs have a robust agenda, including supporting quality improvement systems tied to child outcomes, partnering with the University of Virginia to develop better teaching methods, working with public school districts to smooth transition from early learning to elementary school, and administering Mid-America Head Start to improve school readiness and provide comprehensive support to some 3,100 children and their families, in partnership with many agencies, including the YMCA of Greater Kansas City, which we honor today. Mark's role in environmental affairs also expanded significantly in the 1990s. Over the years, the Air Quality Forum has broken, crit brokered critical strategies to ensure compliance with air quality standards, and it continues to protect our air using a nationally recognized Clean Air Action Plan, which is the impetus for many community initiatives, including the recent launch of an innovative car sharing program at UMKC. In the 1990s, Mark played a key role in leading stormwater management strategies, and since then, the region has developed even more far-sighted conservation approaches. A regional natural, natural resources inventory completed nearly a decade ago has led to the protection of over 90,000 acres through city and county stream protection regulations. New data now being collected will enhance sustainable land use plans and design of parks and public works. A new forestry assessment shows the extraordinary economic value of the region's 249 million trees through air quality, energy, and carbon benefits. And collaborative work continues on water quality education, coordinated planning in the Brush Creek watershed, and managing the degradation of the Missouri Riverbed. The Solid Waste Management District, created in the 1990s in response to state legislation, is celebrating 15 years of the Household Hazardous Waste Program responsible for safely disposing nearly five million pounds of waste. This is part of an ambitious goal to divert 80% of waste from area landfills by 2023, with a short-term goal of 40% by 2013. Local communities have embraced the recycling challenge to enhance recycling services, and programs like Ripple Glass, which we honor today, have put the region well on its way to meeting its diversion goals. As we entered the 21st century, Mark's agenda evolved once again. A rapidly shifting global context and new social, environmental, and economic realities propelled significant progress in building new sustainable, competitive capacity. For instance, our region responded to global security threats through the strategic deployment of homeland re uh, security resources to create a true metropolitan response system one of the major regional success stories of the last decade. Impressive not only because it cooperatively invested over $70 million, but has effectively linked police, fire, EMS, emergency management, public health, hospitals, and other partners that play critical roles in emergencies. And our region has broadened its environmental concerns to address increasingly relevant energy issues. A feasibility study now just being completed on the best ways to finance energy improvements through property assessments will be very helpful in propelling this agenda forward. 
And over the last year, Mark has worked with 25 cities to install and test over 5,000 energy efficient streetlights. A partnership with the City of Kansas City, Missouri's Energy Works KC is supporting six pilot projects to create a pipeline for projects in the emergency, for jobs in the emerging energy sector, along with several energy efficiency demonstrations in community facilities. A team of 11 cities is developing more energy efficiency re re residential building codes, and several cities are cooperatively working to demonstrate the use of solar technologies. In this era, we have put a high priority on the vitality of our communities and in pursuing a regional vision for sustainable development. The Creating Sustainable Places Coordinating Committee is focused on demonstrating how compact, mixed-use developments along six transportation corridors can create places with greater economic, social, and environmental opportunities. The First Suburbs Coalition has just marked 10 years of co cooperatively promoting the stability and character of the region's first suburbs through initiatives to spark investment, address mortgage foreclosures, and extend a highly successful remodeling loan program. The Green Impact Zone, initiated by Congressman Cleaver and actively supported by Kansas City, Missouri, has attracted national attention to its innovative strategy for transforming an urban neighborhood using sustainability as a central organizing theme. Early attention to infrastructure, employment, youth development, and home weatherization have led to promising investments, including the recently announced redevelopment of the Bancroft School as a catalyst project. Adding to the, mem the momentum of this community is the overlapping Big Five Urban Neighborhood Initiative of the Greater Kansas City Chamber Co of Commerce, which reflects the increasingly urgent understanding that our region's sustainable competitive capacity depends on equitable opportunity in every neighborhood. Philanthropic leadership has been especially important to regional efforts to address people and places in need, including programs that mark to improve healthcare access among the poor and uninsured through coordination of safety net services and cooperative mental health case management. And through a new CDC grant, three public health agencies serving Jackson County are cooperatively addressing chronic disease prevention. With a host of partners, the Homelessness Task Force of Greater Kansas City is now working through MARC to increase the supply of affordable housing and create more, a more cohesive system of services to meet the diverse needs of the homeless. Dedicated leaders like Karen Heron of Harvesters, who we honor today, are critical to the system of support for people in need. Responding to the need for job growth, a regional partnership secured grants to strengthen the region's workforce development system through sophisticated employment data networks, sector-based partnerships in information technology and advanced manufacturing, and resources to develop small businesses in growing industries. These workforce developments geared to a new economy are among an ambitious list of ideas released just last week by the mayor's bi-state innovations team, appointed by Mayor James and Mayor Reardon, and facilitated by Mark to maximize regional opportunities from Google's installation of ultra-high-speed fiber. All of these initiatives are supported by ongoing programs and services such as cooperative purchasing, saving local governments money, the Government Training Institute and Academy for Sustainable Communities bringing practical solutions and cutting-edge ideas to public officials, the Small Cities Program providing essential support to smaller communities, and the production of high quality data and research, forecasting and analysis of economic and demographic trends, and increasingly sophisticated mapping, visioning, and decision making tools. Four decades of collaboration, four decades of progress, four decades of building capacity. This is your achievement, your capacity to plan, to cooperate, and to lead for a sustainable, competitive future. Congratulations to all of you on 40 years of working through Mark to make Greater Kansas City even greater. Thank you, David. Each year, Mark recognizes individuals and organizations throughout the region that have demonstrated exceptional leadership and proven excellence in serving the Kansas City regional community. 
The Regional Leadership Awards recognize excellence in four areas. Advocating regional concepts, approaches, and programs. Advancing our region's vision of a community of excellence. Addressing regional challenges and achieving improved quality of life opportunities for our region's residents. Each year, the Mark Board of Directors solicits nominations from the community, from local area govern governments and from numerous committees for these individual leadership awards. Let me call your attention to the award itself. It's a hand-carved cube made from pieces of different types of wood, symbolizing Mark's role in uniting the entire metropolitan area together to work for the greater good. All of today's honorees truly exhibit the spirit of this award. They have made extraordinary contributions to our region and have worked hard in helping bring all of us together. Their contributions will endure for many years to come. Now let's begin our awards presentation. Turn, please turn your attention to the screens at either end of the room. Hunger is an issue that knows no city limits, no state lines, in fact, no boundaries at all. Karen Heron, and through the organization she directs, Harvesters, understands that perfectly and works in partnership with 620 nonprofits in Northeast Kansas and Western Missouri to deliver some 40 million pounds of food in 2011 to meet the needs of the hungry in our community. Over a third of those were children. Our mission is, is pretty simple. Uh, it's to feed hungry people today and seek to end uh, hunger tomorrow. And Harvesters is such a willing partner within our region. They match up with the different pantries we have in the community, providing resources for families that without Harvesters would have no source for food. When I joined the board of Harvesters about uh, eight or nine years ago, uh, we had a budget of about three or four million dollars. Um, we have now tripled uh, that budget. In addition to that, uh, we were distributing about 20 million pounds of food at the time. Uh, now we're distributing approximately 40 million pounds of food. And so the growth has been exponential uh, and a lot of that is a result of Karen's leadership. Karen is the quintessential uh, definition of leadership in our community and our region. I think Karen possesses a perfect combination of uh, both passion, um, vision, knowledge, aptitude, um, and she's used all of those attributes uh, in guiding and leading harvesters uh, through a very difficult time over the past five or six years. Karen's commitment, Karen's passion, uh, Karen's desire uh, to feed those who are hungry in our community is infectious. Um, when you talk to Karen, when you watch Karen, um, when you learn what Karen does a day in and day out, uh, you know that there's something special uh, about her. And like I said, it's infectious. People want to join in. People want to uh, work with her. They want to support her because the mission is so easy to understand. Um, those who are without food need food. And um, she's been instrumental. Uh, and that harvesters would not be where it is today, um, but for her leadership, her passion, her commitment, uh, her knowledge, um, and her ability to uh, generate consensus um, on the board and in the community. Congratulations, Karen. Mid-America Regional Council is very pleased to recognize you and your work through Harvesters by bestowing the 2012 Regional Leadership Award for the positive impact made on the lives of the hungry in our community. Good, a good afternoon, I'm Donna Owens, council member Overland Park and a member of the board um, uh, for Mid-America Regional Council. 
Please join me in congratulating Karen Heron for her years of dedication to the hungry in our region. I'm very happy to present this award to Karen today, one of the most effective leaders in our community, Shirley. Her limitless energy and her belief that we can put an end to hunger in our community is a beacon to all of us. Her work embracing all corners of our region um, and that makes her a model that we all can look uh, up to. Karen, we are truly thankful to you for carrying on this difficult work with courage and perseverance. Congratulations from all of us. <laughs> Well, it truly is a privilege to serve Harvesters. It's a wonderful organization, makes such a difference. And I really want to thank Mark for this honor. I truly support the work that Mark does. And I really believe that to have progress throughout our region, we have to feed people. There's nothing more basic than the need to be able to have a meal and to feed your family. So we're all here working together for progress throughout our community. Again, thank you to Mark. Well, from uh, Mark's perspective, we're all about addressing problems that uh, require regional solutions. Uh, and certainly a good example of that would be uh, preparation for emergency demands for services such as storms. Uh, those no, no political or geographic boundaries. Mr. Henderson has prepared us to deal with mass uh, damages by uh, putting together a regional morgue, and uh, grotesque as that may seem, it becomes very necessary in a, an event where there are significant loss of life. Michael Henderson is our Chief of Forensic Operations and Investigations. He's been involved for 20 years in this, this whole field and this specialty of mass fatality management and victim identification. He has been deployed 14 times. He worked at the World Trade Center, he also managed the morgue operations at Katrina for nine months. And then he also, when we were deployed down to Joplin, he was the deputy commander for that operation. The regional group that, that Mike has formed, um, it now has its own logo and its own name, and it's the uh, Kansas City Regional uh, Mortuary Operations Response Group. So it's uh, KCR Moore, and he is the commander of, of that unit. And now that we have the equipment and the people and a good strong leader with Mike Henderson, we can have pre-event training so that if and when we need this um, uh, to do a victim identification, that um, the people will know each other, they've trained together, they work together. Uh, to actually be able to respond and handle a mass fatality here. It's so valuable now that we actually are probably a model for the country in having the several jurisdictions that have this resource locally because it's something that with having the actual experience, you know, with something as large as 9-11 as or Katrina that, that we know that Unfortunately, people will die. We don't like to think about it, but also when there are fatalities, that it's also very important for the living and for those families to, to have closure and to go on and that their loved ones are handled with dignity and respect. I mean, the work he's doing with the regional morgue, well, these aren't things you want to think about, the importance of that, being ready for really a catastrophic event. You know, what if, the what if scenarios. We don't want to think about it, but that's such critical work that's, that's going on. And we saw what occurs in Joplin or occurred in Joplin or down in Louisiana. Uh, the reality is it's people like Mike Henderson that were there on the front lines making sure that the public was taken care of. But now we're doing that here at a local level and we hope not to need his work, but at the end of the day, if we need it, you know, what he's done is so important for all of us. He has the experience and, and the ability and the, the personality to, um, to handle this, this huge job. So I'm very pleased to be able to announce today the presentation of this regional award to Michael Henderson. Uh, we thank him for his work and his contribution to our region, and uh, it's with pleasure I announce him as a Mark Award recipient.
Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jan Markison. I serve on the City Council of Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm the second vice chair of the Mark Board. I have the privilege today of congratulating and honoring Michael Henderson for his leadership in helping our region plan in the event of mass casualties. Obviously, none of us want to think about this, but it's very reassuring to know that we have a plan in place. Uh, we've seen it too often in other communities, and um, we're really grateful uh, to Mike for that. So, Mike, on behalf of the communities in our region, Thank you for your work to ensure that we have the infrastructure in place and that the staff is trained to deal with such emergencies. This is a perfect example of regional collaboration in one of the most basic areas. So we are really uh, grateful for your work and thank you for all you do. Thank you all very much. Uh, this truly represents Mark and what they've done. Um, this is a teamwork thing. What we do in our office and what we do on deployment can't be done by one person. Uh, we have several partners in the Mark region. This has been a five and a half year project that we worked on and now we can pull it together. And without a great team, it wouldn't have happened. And I work with a great team in our office and Mark has definitely supported us and backed us up and without them we wouldn't be where we are today so thank you all very much mark since its inception has had an important responsibility in making sure that we stay interconnected and that is through our transportation system that plan needs to be reflective of our regional needs. The Regional Transit Alliance has been a very strong partner in making sure that we move forward to the next level of ensuring that we have a strong and robust transit system. Our mission is to talk about transit, to explain transit, to uh, help people understand why increased investment in public transportation is an important part of making this city work. Kitty McCoy uh, is the immediate past chair of the Kansas City Regional Transit Alliance and she just brought a sense of purpose to our, our organization. This is actually, from everything that we hear, this is a visualization of what everybody thinks should happen. There wasn't a, a focused plan of action, and that really has changed in, uh, in Kitty's administration. Kitty McCoy has done such a great job of getting the advocates together, promoting regional transit. Her commitment is infectious. Her engaging personality and her willingness to really get in and do the hard work but then also to be the um, front person for presenting regional transit in a way that really inspires our community to hop on board and get regional transit moving in Kansas City area. Her chutzpah, her good sense of humor, her understanding of transit so there's a real sense of importance and thanks to Kitty McCoy for doing what she's done. You know, as we look at 2012, 13 and beyond, you know, one of the great issues that's really going to bring us together in this region are efforts by people just like Kitty McCoy to bring us together in a regional way, in a collaborative way uh, with transit. I mean, her efforts on transit, uh, it's wonderful. They've, they've now gone recognized what she's done for years now. Uh, but the reality is it's one of the great marquee issues that I think could define our city going forward. I think we're, we're moving in the direction of, of knowing what transit is and feeling a desire for it. Our next regional award goes to Kitty McCoy, who exemplifies the voice of leadership and advocacy for transit as a very essential part of our regional transportation plan. Good afternoon, I'm Marge Vogt, council member from the city of Olathe and first vice chair of the Mark Board. 
Won't you all join me in congratulating Kitty McCoy for her dedication in pr improving public transit in the region through her leadership of the Kansas City Regional Transit Alliance. As the Kansas co-chair of the uh, region's Total Transportation Policy Committee, I'm especially pleased, step forward, Kitty, uh, to present this award to Kitty McCoy. Kitty stepped forward at a time when the region needed a strong voice and speaking up for and educating people about the importance of transit, the value of transit to our community's future. Kitty, thank you for bringing us closer to the robust transit system that you envision. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. All I can say is, oh boy. <laughs> thank you, thank the Mid-America Regional Council. I could not have done this without the support of my board who said, we double dog dare you. <laughs> and I did. And the other person I would like to thank is, is my sister Carolyn Celestine who's city, seated with me today. Um, I graced her door with tears streaming down my face and when she opened the door I just said, it's too big. <laughs> but she said, no, it's not. And we, we got it done, and we're going to continue working on. So again, thank you to the Mid-America Regional Council, and thank all of you. One thing that is so outstanding about our region is its commitment to sustainability and entrepreneurship. Ripple Glass is really the gold standard in both of these areas. We're makers of beer, that's what the brewery is. We make beer and we want to put it in the best package possible to preserve that beer and keep it as good as it is here at the brewery. So that best package is an amber bottle, a brown bottle. That's the best way to send that beer out. We run about 30,000 bottles per hour on our line. So we're producing a tremendous amount of potential glass waste. Uh, so we felt like we were part of the problem here at the brewery. We were producing this waste material and uh, we needed to help devise a solution for that in our hometown. So Ripple Glass came along because of the guys at Boulevard Brewing Company who send out 10 million bottles just in Kansas City every year. And they recognized that most of those were ending up in a landfill. And they didn't feel very good about that. So in a product stewardship opportunity, they said we should be doing something about glass recycling. And being the entrepreneurs that they are, they said, let's make this a viable business. So they built a processing facility where we're sitting today. And they created a collection system. We have more than 100 drop-off locations in our community for people to deliver glass. And we bring it here, we recycle it, and then sell it to Owens Corning in Kansas City, Kansas, where they make pink fiberglass insulation out of it, making our uh, built environment energy, energy efficient to boot. The best use for a bottle is to go back to another bottle. We have a sorter that actually identifies brown glass, knocks it off the conveyor belt onto another conveyor belt where it comes out here. And then this glass is sent to Oklahoma where they make more Boulevard beer bottles out of it. So those bottles are being made last year with about 30% of the glass that we consumed was made with glass that we sold them, with recycled glass. The name really goes back to uh, Mike, Mike Guts. He, he said, you know, what we really want to do is make a difference not only here, but we want to have an impact that ripples out into the rest of the region. And people are ecstatic about glass recycling. They love the story of Ripple Glass, they love the local nature of Ripple Glass. And, you know, and they're enthusiastic about the fact that a local company like Boulevard really took responsibility for its product and said, we're not going to worry just about Boulevard bottles, we want all glass. We want to provide an opportunity for everybody to recycle. We don't deserve all the credit. We deserve only a part of the credit because it ultimately boils down to people and uh, people taking the step to take this waste product, this bottle, and put it in the recycle bin. Don't put it in the trash can, put it in the recycle bin. So, it's ultimately the, the people who use our system are the ones to be thanked for the, uh, the success of the program. When a number of our main carriers for our trash disposals in our cities declined to carry glass, that left a great void. 
and we are so pleased that Ripple Glass and uh, their operations stepped up to take care of this important problem for our recycling community. We don't have to go out of our region to reuse the product. It all stays local. It truly is a sustainable effort, a regional effort, and a very entrepreneurial effort. And I'm very proud that Ripple Glass is receiving one of Mark's regional leadership awards. They truly deserve it. Good afternoon, I'm Ed Peterson. I'm a Johnson County Commissioner, and I also serve as treasurer of the Mark Board. It's great to be able to recognize Ripple Glass here this afternoon. Uh, they recognized a need in the community. They set about to address the problem, and their solution has been dramatically successful. They're the model corporate citizen. Please join me uh, I'd like to introduce John McDonald, a principal with Ripple, and I'd ask you to join me in congratulating them on receipt of this award. Well, I'd uh, like to thank Mark for uh, making this possible. They, uh, they helped us uh, uh, several times over the process. Um, you know, we, we've, at the brewery, uh, when I started it back in 89, I didn't know what I was doing, and, and it turned out pretty good in the end. <laughs> and uh, when Mike and I decided to start Ripple Glass, it was the same kind of deal. We had no idea really what we were doing. We just knew that it was fundamentally wrong to throw all this glass in the landfill, and we said, let's, let's do something about it. And I think um, it's a real educational thing, and I think it's important for everybody to know, the reason it makes sense is there's a lot of energy involved in a glass beer bottle. And what makes it fundamentally recyclable over and over again is to recapture that energy. Because it costs a lot less for a company to melt down a bottle than to start from scratch. And I think if we can really educate people as to why, we can get more people to do it. And um, I hope everybody out in this room today is recycling their glass, but if you're not, it's never too late to start. So thank you very much for this award. The YMCA serves a great purpose. It takes care of our youth in our metro area. It is a place where students and young people can go to that is a safe place. And in our society today, we need our youth to have a safe place to go. And the YMCA provides that. The YMCA is for uh, youth development, um, healthy living, and social responsibility. And we uh, look to improve the lives of Kansas Cityans through all of the activities uh, around that. Um, from you know, early childhood education to uh, learning to swim to health, helping families um, eat and live uh, healthy. Uh, so it touches so many lives in you know, a lot of different areas. My official title is President CEO, but I'm the Chief Encouragement Officer for the YMCA's <laughs> here in Kansas City. I have a real philosophy is I think people can live without a lot of things, but the one thing that people cannot not live without is hope. The Y is, a, is an organization that touches so much of our region. Um, it, you know, it goes from you know, north in Atchison down to the uh, Miami County area, um, from Bonner Springs all the way over to Independence. Uh, 150 different locations uh, are touching uh, children and families uh, throughout our region. The Y is really at a great place in its history now. Seventh oldest Y in America in Kansas City. And, um, and we want to be relevant for years to come and we're just going to do it with different programs and different services and different activities. But at the end of, it, it, at the end of all of this, it's about people. From schools to churches to athletic fields to sports teams, uh, because we know again the needs are great with a population of almost you know, over two, two million people. We have 200,000 that we touched in 2011. Uh, 11, but the, the need is great, so we can't go it alone. And, and I am a big believer in the old adage, it does take a village to raise a city or a community, and even though we're very broad-based, we do it a neighborhood at a time, a kid at a time, a family at a time, 
and uh, that's going to take lots of other partners to do that both now and in the future. When I um, am able to, to give time to an organization, I like to identify an organization that's making a difference in people's lives. And uh, it's easy to see where the why makes a difference, uh, regardless of the age, um, regardless of the family status, regardless of the income uh, for, for the families. And this is an organization that makes a difference in people's lives. You know, in today's times, the needs are greater than ever, and the why is more relevant than ever. So we're really about trying to advance our mission of spirit, mind, and body through our new vision plan, which is safe passage and passport for life, to move kids and families through transitional periods of time. And we all in our life have transitional periods, so it applies to everyone. I am very pleased that the YMCA is being honored with this Regional Leadership Award. They deserve it. Congratulations, YMCA. Good afternoon, I'm Kathy Duesenberry, Commissioner of Platte County and Secretary of Mark Board. Please join me in recognizing the YMCA for its long service to our region. Brian Kamerlick, Chair of the YMCA Board, will accept the award on behalf of the Y. I am so pleased to present this award today because I have observed firsthand the wonderful contributions that the Y makes to our region. Not only do they provide early learning programs as part of the Head Start system, they provide opportunities for children of all ages and at all stages. And adults, they take advantage of the Y facilities to exercise their bodies, and their minds. The Y is such an important part of our community and is so deserving of this Regional Leadership Award. Congratulations. On behalf of the Greater Kansas City YMCA, we, we thank you for the award. Uh, I'm simply a, a volunteer board member uh, along with my colleague Madeline Romius from AT&T. Um, the honor goes to the staff and the leadership team of the YMCA at the table next to us. Mid-America Regional Council has been a wonderful partner. Um, we work with the Mid-America Regional Council in the Head Start program. Um, Platte County is a great partner for us. All the schools across the Kansas City area is we're the largest provider of childcare in the, in the region. We have over 100 um, different areas, uh, uh, different locations in which we serve children. And, and as David Bird, who's, who's unable to be here today, mentioned, over 200,000 uh, individual lives were touched this past year. And, and I'm so honored to be a part of the YMCA and its mission around healthy living, youth development, and social responsibility. Thank you all. My name is Mike Sanders. I'm the Jackson County Executive. It's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Mick Cornett, with Oklahoma City. But before that, how about a, a final round of applause for all of our awardees, as well as uh, David Warm and Mark for a great event. With that, it's, it's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker. Uh, I think as many of us in this room has done, and frankly the nation and the world has done, we've all taken notice of the remarkable renaissance of the city that is Oklahoma City, and it's due in no small part to its great mayor, Mick Cornett. You know, as Oklahoma City continues to draw positive attention nationally and internationally, Mick was nominated and awarded, imagine this, as the governing magazine's public official of the year internationally, finished second place to only the mayor of Mexico City for the international award. You know, in a fairly short amount of time, he's put together an amazing collection of life experiences with achievements that range from competitive sports, an award-winning television journalist, college professor, business owner, politics, and now keynote speaker. Uh, as cities grapple with needs in education, infrastructure, health, uh, regionalism, arts, sports, you know, his theory was, let's do it all. And in a short amount of time, as he starts his third term, Oklahoma City has done it all. And in a short amount of time, with his forward thinking, quality of life initiatives, uh, they begin to attract attention from all around the globe and has really put Oklahoma City on the map as a world-class city. 
Uh, because of his great efforts, because of everything that he's done, figure this elected officials, he was reelected to his third term with 88% of the vote. That sets the bar pretty high. He holds a journalism degree from the University of Oklahoma, so don't hold that against him, and also an MBA from NYU. It's my honor to welcome the mayor of Oklahoma City, Mick Cornett. Thank you all very much. It is a, an honor to be here, and I want to congratulate uh, the award winners tonight, uh, to this afternoon. It, uh, it's obvious that you're taking on the tough issues. Um, you see um, award winners in things like um, hunger and transportation and, and Mike's collecting dead people. And, and, and you know, you, 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 see, you see that, gosh, there's just so many things to do when, you're, when you start talking about a city. And, and um, I have been to Kansas City probably, I don't know, 25 or 30 times, but it's always as a visitor. And I, I've probably been here just enough to be under the illusion that I have some idea of what I'm talking about if, if someone asks me about Kansas City. But I, I know very well, having served in, in leadership in Oklahoma City, you really don't know a place until you've lived there. And so you know this city, I don't. But I do know a lot about Oklahoma City, where I have lived almost all of my life. And I think there are lessons to be learned about Oklahoma City's experience, some of them about what to do and some of them about what not to do. And uh, certainly, you know, we've, we've learned the hard way and, and, and tried to learn from cities like yours um, and, and this metro area about best practices. And I, and, I, and I think by continuing conversations, we can all learn from each other. How many of you have, um, I don't know, ever heard of Oklahoma City? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, well, we're starting somewhere. How, how many of you have, have, uh, have been there? Okay, gosh, almost there. Has anybody ever lived there? What'd you leave for? <laughs> Man, I was hoping no hands would go up at that point. But a, a sprinkling of you have, have come from Oklahoma City at one point in your life, and, and, uh, and that's, that's terrific. Um, uh, you know, it's, um, it's been an amazing journey to watch this city, but, but uh, I, I've got to tell you, it's... it's um, it's, it's a city that has seen a lot of ups and downs through its history. You have heard the saying that Rome was not built in a day. Well, we were. <laughs> On a single day in 1889, they lined up the settlers and they fired off a pistol and the settlers roared across the countryside and they put down a stake. And that stake was their new home. And at the end of that day, the population of Oklahoma City went from zero to 10,000. And our planning department has been paying for that ever since. <laughs> it, it wasn't the best of ideas. Almost every piece of property had multiple claims. You, you can only imagine that at the end of that first day, the citizens got together and they elected a mayor. And then they shot him. I've never really thought that part of the story was very funny, but <laughs> I see what kind of audience I'm dealing with here. Uh, the city, you know, kind of stumbled in, the, in those early years. In fact, 10 years later, the population was still 10,000 and presumably a different 10,000. I think many of those original settlers took off for other places like, like this part of the country and, and others. But between 1900 and 1910, it just exploded and the population went to 90,000 by the end of that decade. And you can imagine the type of growth that must have been going on and the pictures of that era show a cosmopolitan city where the settlers had built all the way to the, to the horizon. You're reminded when you don't need a building permit, a lot of great things can happen. But, <laughs> Most of those structures fell down or burnt down, and, and, uh, and so when you look at those pictures of 1910, you're wondering, man, where'd all that stuff go? Um, eventually, the, the city, though, started to kind of reflect on the energy industry and the ups and downs of that economy. Oil was discovered in Oklahoma City in 1928, and so if you look at a picture from that era or soon after, there's just oil derricks, you know, across the, the, the horizon as far as you can see. A lot of entrepreneurship has taken place in Oklahoma City. In fact, in 1937, we invented something that is in virtually every city around the world, and that is the parking meter. <laughs> 